It's the Kyle Hyman Show on Redeemer Radio. And then they decided to leave on the boat and follow Jesus. Uh huh. And there's another thing that they left. Do you remember? Their father. Uh huh. And then there's another thing that they left. Do you remember? Their nets. Okay. I'm Kyle Hyman. And I'm his son, Frank. And welcome to another episode of Catholicism, Catholicism with, with my, my kid. kid. Did I get it? That was good. It was good. All right, Frank, what are we talking about today? I had you read from, what, what book are you in? Matthew. Matthew. And four, so, 17. Matthew chapter 4, starting with verse 17. And what did you find in there? Um, What's the story about? Simon and Andrew meeting Jesus Mm -hmm. and leaving their boats to follow him. And then they saw two other brothers, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John. They were in a boat with their father Zebedee. Okay. And then they decided to leave on the boat and follow Jesus. Uh Uh-huh. And there's another thing that they left. Do you remember? Their father. Uh Uh-huh. And then there's another thing that they left. Do you remember? Their nets. Okay. So I want to focus on the nets for a second here. Do you have a net? Yes. How big is it? Not that big. How much do you think it costs? Five dollars. I think you're about right. Yeah. And that was only because we got it when we were on vacation. And we probably paid more because it was from a gift shop. But it's just a little net, right? Yeah. What kind of a net do you think that they were using? A huge net where you throw it in the water and then you pull it up and it traps fit. Yeah. How big do you think it was? 16 by 14. (laughs) Feet? Yeah. 16 feet by 14 feet? So I was doing a little bit of research into this and... A lot of people think that the kind of fishing that they would have been doing involves... It was a cast net. Yes, it's a cast net. And it probably would have been about 100 feet long and 20 feet wide or tall when they drop it in. And they'd go out in the water and they'd drop this in and would have cork or something to float on the top and then weights on the bottom and then they would drag the whole thing in. So... But that's not it. Yeah. Wait, what but they used? That, well, that's that's what a lot of scripture scholars and history scholars say. That's what they were fishing with at the time. So, if it's a hundred feet by twenty feet, that's probably bigger than our house. So, if you can imagine this huge net, one, it's how you can catch a lot of fish, but also, it's a big investment, right? But didn't they make it? It says they, they mended it, right? So mending would have been repairing. Oh. Okay, so they may have made it themselves or they may have bought it off of somebody else or paid somebody to make it for them. Uh, yeah, so they were repairing their nets. That was, that was something that you constantly, you always had to take care of your net because it was a big investment. And this is what they were doing for a living. Uh, elsewhere, it says that they had hired hands. So they were probably so successful that they were hiring people to work for them because they were catching so many fish. So they were good at what they did. They did it for a living. And this was a big investment to have boats and to have nets and to have people working for you. This is a business that they had built up, right? So imagine in our day, somebody starting a business, they've got a factory maybe where they make things and then they meet Jesus and they just leave all of that to follow Jesus. They leave what's makes them money, the net and boats and their family to follow Jesus. So what are they leaving? Everything. Basically everything. It's a huge sacrifice for them to follow Jesus. But they realize they have no choice because this is the right thing to do to follow Jesus. Right? They did have a choice and they chose the right thing. They could have stayed with their nets and stayed fishing, or they could follow Jesus. Which would you rather do? Jesus. And you love fishing, too. It's not like you hate to fish and you said you'd rather be with Jesus than fishing. You like to fish, right? 
But I don't really get to. My, I take it off the hook most of the time to get cut. Yeah. So the thing to remember here, is, first of all, this is an important story. We talked about the feeding of the 5,000 with Sebastian and how that's in all four Gospels. It's the only miracle other than the resurrection that's in all four Gospels. But this story is not a miracle. It's just a story of these people that follow Jesus. It's also in all four Gospels. So Matthew chapter 4, Mark chapter 1, Luke chapter 5, John chapter 1, all tell the story of the disciples who left everything, who dropped their nets to follow Jesus. And it's a reminder to us that sometimes we have to make sacrifices to follow Jesus. Yeah. And it doesn't mean that we can't have a successful business, that we can't be professional fishermen or do some other work. But if God's calling us to follow him in a unique way, like he was the disciples, they end up being priests. They end up being the first bishops, the apostles, right? So they were called to something special. And so they left their family. They left their livelihood to follow God in that way. And no matter what God is calling you to, it's going to involve sacrifice. That's something we can pretty much be sure of. Following Jesus is not always easy. Doing the right thing is not always easy. But it's necessary. What? (laughs) Right? Yeah. So at some point, you might have to make sacrifices to do the right thing, to follow Jesus. And if God's calling you to be a priest or a religious brother or a missionary, you might have to leave things that seem important to you. You might have to leave your family to go follow God. You might have to leave things that you've worked hard for. Maybe you work hard and you have a college education and God calls you to something else. You say, well, this seems like this is all wasted. Do you think all of the work that they had done fishing was wasted whenever they followed Jesus? Or do you think they were able to apply some of those skills to their ministry? Wasted. Maybe a little bit. <laughs> I think also they were able to to use some of the, the skills that they had being hard workers because it was, a, it was a hard job to be able to work with other people. All right. So what's the moral of the story? What did you learn? You drop your nets whenever you see somebody really good walking by. <laughs> How do you know if they're really good? Because they're glowing. You think Jesus was glowing? Uh-huh. It says it in one of the Bible stories in my oh. kid's book. Oh, the uh, transfiguration, maybe? Yeah. Where he's on a mountain with Moses and Elijah. Oh, yeah. He said we should build some tents. Maybe we can do that for a story to talk about what that means. He lights up. Yeah, he doesn't he doesn't glow on a regular basis though. That wasn't a normal thing. Um, like, hey, it wasn't glow in the dark Jesus just kind of walking on the beach. <laughs> but when God calls us to something, we need to be willing to to let go of, of things that we might cling to, things that we might think are important, to be able to do the right thing. Deal? Mm-hmm. All right. Any words of wisdom for people listening? Don't do anything bad. Right? (laughs) Good advice. If you do something bad, then what should you do? Never do it again and say you're sorry. That's good. Go to confession. Yeah. Thanks, Frank. You're welcome.